do you know why James Victoria is a sexy motherfucker? <laughs> it's because I say so. Today, um, our guest today needs no introduction. Um, it's Mr. James Victoria, and he is a MoMA artist, designer, author, motivational speaker, and I could not be more excited to introduce him to all of you little dragons. I have tons of burning questions. If you guys have any questions about creativity, design, woo, James! Oh my gosh. Hello. It's been so long. It's great to see you and I love, baby, I love watching the bright arc of your career. Thank you so much. I mean, I remember we were, well, the picture I posted of us, it was literally like 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, um, hey, darling, what can we talk about today? So I would like to, for you to tell us a little bit about you and how you became the great James Victoria that we all love, admire, and adore because I, you know, I, I've known you for such a long time and I just want everyone to get to know you and share um, about what you do. You know, it's a funny thing. I was, on, I was just on a, I was on a coaching call earlier today and uh, this guy, um, he needed to step up his game, his marketing game. I said, dude, I need you to be bold. I want you to be audacious. And he's like, nah. And I said, okay, listen, it goes like this. Do you know why James Victoria is a sexy motherfucker? <laughs> it's because I say so. And he's I like, love it. oh. I get it. <laughs> so Dot, um, for the uneducated on the James Victoria scope, um, you know, I started as a designer. I started uh, because I uh, I was a designer um, and I gave a damn, I gave a shit. So I started making political, social, cultural posters and kind of made a name for myself there. But uh, I'm a much better teacher. So what I did is I started to try to, try to recraft my career and everything I've learned and everything I care about into teaching professionals how to own their creativity. You know, like I know how hard it is just to be creative, just to grow up creative and to hold on to that. When, you know, when I have a whole history of people slapping me down, don't be so loud. Why do you have to draw on things? Why do you, you know, like this, why do you have to sing all the time? Why do you have to play and have joy in your life? Right. And I know how hard it is when we become adults and then we want to get paid for that creativity, paid for that thing that makes us vulnerable. So I'm like uh, Moses for creative people. I set them free. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So I want to talk a little bit about imposter syndrome because ah. this is like, you know, super trending on Instagram and all of us, at least myself even suffer from imposter syndrome. Have you ever had imposter syndrome and how did you like deal with that? Uh, you know, I, I have it right now. I have it right now. The imposter syndrome isn't imposter syndrome. It's self-worth syndrome. It's this, it's this deep embedded feeling that we all have that it's like, we're not worthy. We're not, we, what we do does, isn't a value, especially for creative people, because what we do is so close to us. But for what I do, Dot, comes easy, quite frankly. If I can just allow myself to go sit and go play and go make, and not worry about what other people think and not worry about getting paid for it and not worry about all this stuff. It's powerful, but that's hard to do. And just understand that like you in your own skin, just standing there have value. You don't have to do a task. You don't have to dance for people. You don't have to have it rewarded. I mean, how do you actually get over like being the perfectionist and like being confident with putting your work out there? Action, 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 action. Tell us what you're doing. Share with us. Tell me the humanity. Action yeah. beats worry. Action beats um, um, procrastination. And procrastination is just another way of, you know, saying it'll, I'll, it'll be done when I'm perfect. Yeah, I'm guilty of being a procrastinator as well. What's your advice on how to actually find your voice as a creative? Um, it's funny. There's a, uh, uh, we just did, we, I think we just did a video on that in the video blog. But um, I've always used that term. I've always talked about it like that finding your voice. And I think I talked about it in fact perfection as finding your voice. And I realized recently that it's not, it's not finding your voice. It's that your voice is buried. It's buried within you. It's buried by the inner critic. It's buried by your ego. It's buried by, by the, the, the trauma you received at art school. If we can just allow 
it. If we can just, if we can, again, self-worth, it comes back to that. If we can just understand that the, the, the beauty that we have inside of us, the, 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 the value that that has. And quite frankly, it's not about the work at all. It's about mm -hmm. your ability to just get it out the door, your ability to just do it again and again and again and again.